Hi, this is a video to show off the new mesh terrain features of Microsplat. Uh, this module essentially allows you to convert your terrain to a mesh and then use it however you would like. Uh, it supports all the features uh, that you will find in your modules, so if you have tessellation or whatever, it will all work on the mesh. So I have a pretty complex scene set up here. I'm using uh, triplanar texturing, I'm using um, streams and lava flows, the dynamic flows. I have terrain blending going on, and I'm going to convert this <clears throat> into a mesh, and then uh, all of that's still going to work if everything goes well. Um, so the mesh converter is pretty simple. Uh, what you do is you go to Microsplat, and you go to Train to Mesh. I have a doctor over here, and you can specify how many chunks and subdivisions each chunk should be. So the way this works is that if I set this to 3, I'm going to get a 3x3 three three grid that represents my terrain of meshes. And the subdivisions is the vertex count, and so if I set it to 64, I'm going to get a 64 by 64 grid of vertices. Now you can set this uh, to basically have, you know, you could just have one giant mesh, um, but uh, there's sometimes an advantage to having uh, a terrain be broken up if you're going to see it closer up. Uh, in that case, then the advantage is that um, you can cull part of the mesh if it's broken up. And... Um, when I say mesh terrains, what I really mean is not arbitrary meshes. I mean meshes that conform to something that could be created by a height field. All Unity terrain is created by a height map. And uh, there are many uh, things in Microsplat that assume they're working on a height map. Um, and so when I say mesh terrain, I mean something that conforms to a height map. Now, when you're done converting this, you could take your uh, mesh and modify it in some way, and things would mostly work, uh, but some of these features that assume it's working on a height map or use a height map to decide where lava should be or things like that, uh, they're, they're going to act a little funny if you do that. Um, so I have some options here other than the subdivisions. Um, I can add colliders to my meshes automatically, which I need to do because terrain blending and... Um, and streams and lava, the dynamic flows, need a, a collider to figure out uh, where they're emitting or, or where the blending is happening. And I'm going to convert the material uh, to be a terrain uh, mesh material instead. And there's a two other options here. One is to delete the terrain uh, when you're done. I don't really use that much because I, th I think that it's better to keep your terrain around and delete it before a build if you're not going to use it. Uh, what most people are doing with this is they're swapping to um, the, the mesh at a lower res at some distance. Um, but if you don't need the terrain at all, you can delete it before builds. Uh, some of the data that you might need to generate might require the terrain still. Things like the perpixel normal uh, and being able to paint on the terrain if you want to change the texturing. And then generate separate shader. What that will do is create a um, copy of this uh, shader uh, and its materials and the keywords that it uses and put that into a new uh, directory in case you want to lower the level of detail on that shader by doing things like turning off tessellation because you realize, hey, this is only going to be in, a di in the distance and so I don't really need these features. I'm going to leave this off for now um, because we're going to be looking at this stuff up close. So... Um, before I do anything, let me press play on this, delete the old terrain I converted, and we'll bring it in, there you go. So if we press play, and let me just get somewhere closer, uh, if we press play on this scene, you'll see that we've got some dynamic lava and some dynamic uh, water going on here flowing down. Looks pretty cool. And this is all running on our terrain. And we've got tessellation when we're up close and tessellation on the lava and uh, triplanar texturing and uh, I've also got terrain blending going on if we're over here. You will see that um, these rocks are being blended with the terrain. So what we're going to do is we are going to convert all of this into um, a mesh workflow and uh, see that it's still working. So let's turn that off. So what we're going to do is select our terrain and then we're going to go here. We're just press convert. We, our options are still set up. So we hit convert. And then we see here now in our scene we have this uh, 3 by 3 grid of terrain meshes. And we can go ahead and turn off our terrain here 
And there'll be a little difference just because of the resolution of the terrain that I'm generating here is lower res. Uh, but the texturing's all there. It's all basically there. If you generate it at the same resolution as the actual terrain, then uh, you would get the, uh, the same thing. And so here we can see our terrain blending is still working. And um, over here as well. And so let's go ahead and press play and make sure the streams and stuff are still working. And they are. And so we can see here our dynamic buffer for the lava and water is still updating, just like it was on the original terrain. Uh, but we are actually operating on meshes now. You can see that these are the meshes here, and our terrain is hidden. Um, so yeah, so the nice thing is, is that all those features that uh, you have will still work on your meshes. Um, and then uh, if, for instance, if let's talk about the actual component here. Go ahead and stop this. So when we set that up, it set up this new um, Microsplat Mesh Terrain script here, which is kind of the equivalent of the Microsplat Terrain. Uh, and it copied our stream manager over because we have the dynamic streams on. And then you'll see it has a uh, reference to all the uh, renderers in these in the actual mesh, ob mesh objects, which don't have anything on them other than uh, this sort of standard collider mesh filter renderer. Um, and then it actually has reference to these two splat textures. So if we go in the project here, I'm in my demo scene, um, and you'll see that there is a splat texture 01 and splat texture 2. Those are the splat maps. Uh, that are used by this train and then we have other things in here from um, me experimenting but uh, but in this case we have our train descriptor and our per pixel train normal uh, and then from a previous convert you can see so it made the meshes here right in the uh, in the data directory and uh, it put those splats in there but if I turn it on that option to um, uh, to have a separate material it would have created this uh, mesh train data with new microsplat data in here and this has um, a meshes, it has its own shader with its own uh, material, and then it has its own set of keywords so that you can come in here and you can change options on this and, uh, and then uh, have your mesh terrain be a different setup. But because I'm not using that in this demo, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Uh, a lot of little stuff I discussed in the docs about this, um, but basically, yeah, it uh, it converts everything into meshes for whatever your use case is, and you can still use all your microsplat stuff, your dynamic snow, etc. And so that's really great because you can um, you can have these things way in the distance. You can turn off everything but what really matters. Uh, you can have them be static meshes, so you know exactly their ca their count, and you're not uh, having the train system do any work. And uh, you can um, you know, still have dynamic snow and things like that that uh, your scene might expect or um, wetness and, and other dynamic options. So yeah, uh, this should be out soon and um, hope you enjoy it. Thanks.